AIVR is triggered most commonly by reperfusion after a myocardial injury. It can also be seen occasionally in infants and children. This usually indicates the presence of AIVR in these children since birth. Other causes that can trigger an ectopic pacemaker in the ventricles leading to AIVR include drug toxicity, such as digoxin, toxicity, cocaine, and volatile anesthetics, including desflurane. More causes include cardiomyopathy, electrolyte abnormalities, myocarditis, and return of spontaneous circulation following a cardiac arrest, as well as an athletic heart. Some patients may present with chest discomfort, shortness of breath, cyanosis, clubbing, peripheral edema, signs and symptoms associated with myocarditis, cardiomyopathy, or clinical picture of electrolyte abnormalities. The clinical manifestation depends on the underlying cause. For example, the patient may have a history of reperfusion following a recent myocardial event, or there may be a history of drug intake or return of spontaneous circulation after a cardiac arrest. EKG of AIVR shows a regular rhythm, ventricular rate between 40 to 120 beats per minute, three or more ventricular complexes with QRS complex greater than 120 milliseconds, and occasional fusion beats or capture beats. A couple of important rhythm shifts to remember. Fusion beats are beats occurring due to the fusion of supraventricular and ventricular impulses. Here, the normal SA nodal rhythm has matched briefly with the ventricular ectopic rhythm. Hence, we say that the two rhythms have fused. This occurs for a brief period. Capture beats are produced due to the transient capturing of ventricles by the SA node in the middle of an AIVR. Again, this happens because an SA nodal impulse gets a chance to enter the ventricles and depolarize them before the ectopic pacemaker located in the ventricles can. Hence, we say that this beat was captured by the SA nodal rhythm. As mentioned earlier, AIVR is a benign condition and usually does not require treatment. It resolves on its own when the SA nodal discharge rate increases than that of the rate of the rhythm that's generated by the ectopic ventricular focus. Having said that, it is important for clinicians to investigate the underlying cause and treat it. For example, restoration of myocardial perfusion, correct the electrolyte abnormalities, or management of the drug toxicity. Last point to mention is that antiarrhythmic drugs can precipitate hemodynamic instability and therefore should be avoided in this situation. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Make sure that you like this video if you like it. If you don't like it, then do unlike. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and please share this channel with others as well.